Hello everyone and welcome to The Sims Lore. Today we'll be looking at the vampire wars happening between the old and the new clans of vampires residing in Bridgeport. The subject of vampires hits close to home for me because believe it or not, I'm from Transylvania. This is going to be a long one, so stick around till the end. Trust me, the tea today is not just hot, but boiling. Don't forget to subscribe and like this if you enjoyed it. Alright, let's get straight into the video. Let's start with the oldest clan in town. First up, their leader, Elvira Slayer. The household bio reads, Don't let her charming personality fool you. For the last 100 years, Elvira has been the most feared and the most powerful vampire in the city. However, a new influx of younger vampires have recently moved into the city. Will it turn ugly? Elvira's bio reads, Elvira's charm and ruthlessness go hand in hand, but will her grip on power in the city be challenged by a younger breed of vampire? So from these we know that Elvira has spent the last 100 years being the most powerful vampire in Bridgeport and as the leader of the oldest clan, but a new clan of younger vampires is killing her vibe. Elvira lives in Bridgeport at 9378 Sterling Parkway in an apartment building called Sanguine Arms. Her apartment is right across from the elevator and there's an open plan situation going on. She has a dining room, kitchen and living area all in one big open space. Elvira has one bedroom and one blood red bathroom, but the apartment has some great views overlooking the city so her victims have something nice to look at while they're being drained of their Anyway, moving on. Elvira is a one-star celebrity adult vampire working as a gene therapist in the medical career where she's doing fairly well. She is brave, a genius, a daredevil, evil and charismatic. She's a Gemini, her favourites are classical music, O-positive blood and the colour black and she has five skill points in logic. Elvira's lifetime wish is to become the emperor of evil, so I don't know about you guys but I find it weird she works in the medical career. But then I looked at her job description. This reads, There are sims with good genes, bad genes, and in rare cases, none at all, which is where the gene therapist steps in. Gradually, through good bedside manners and therapeutic measures, the patient will have the best gene simoleons can buy. The stakes have been upped now that the genes are out of the bottle. I feel like Elvira could easily pull some strings and have an army of genetically modified vampires to work for her so she can rule the world but that's just a theory. In her inventory, Elvira has the usual high school diploma, digital camera and umbrella, but she also has a medical journal and beeper conclusive with her job. As well, she has three plasma fruits and a book titled Murder in Pleasant View. Elvira has a pretty big relationships panel. She has a lot of acquaintances, but is best friends forever with vampires Morgan Hemlock and William Fangman. She is good friends with Matthew Hamming, the five-star celebrity, and with vampire Vladimir Schlick. Elvira has also quite a few enemies, which are Wogan Hemlock, Bella Sama Hemlock, Bo Merrick, and Jessica Talon. We can see Elvira's clan forming here from the relationships panel, so let's take a closer look at our allies. Next up is Vladimir Schlick, whom Elvira is good friends with. The household bio reads, Vlad's ravishly good looks have tricked many a good sim under his spell. Most sims in the city find him irresistible. He is well connected in the local vampire scene, but with a new crowd on the rise, Vlad might have to choose sides. Vladimir's bio reads, Vladimir has benefited greatly over the years from his long-lasting relationship with Elvira Slayer. But if a reckoning between old and new vampires in the city comes, whose side will he take? Vladimir is said to be a reference to Vlad the Impaler, or better known as Dracula. Dracula wasn't his actual name, but a nickname that he was given. It originated with his father, who was named Vlad Dracul, which in modern Romanian means Vlad the Devil. Anyways, back to the Sims. So from his personal and household bios, we know Vlad is a well-regarded, irresistible Sim who benefited from a long relationship with Elvira. The impending change coming between the vampire clans can be felt in both bios, but with Elvira's, the question at the end, will it turn ugly, kind of gives us an insight into what kind of vampire she is. But with Vlad's bio, it sounds like there's a choice to be made between the new and old clans. I wonder why. Let's take a closer look. 
Vlad lives at 22 Canal Avenue in an apartment building called Founders Keep. Much like Elvira's apartment, although not as nice, he has an open plan living, dining and kitchen area as you come in. The apartment has one bedroom and one bathroom and an extra room for his coffin. Interestingly, Vlad is a few days older than Elvira, even though it's said that she's the most powerful vampire in the city. Vlad is also an adult vampire working as a thug in the criminal career where he's doing pretty well. He is a workaholic, a technophobe, athletic, evil, and a coward. Vlad is an Aries, his favorites are indie music, O Positive Blood, and the color black, and he has two skill points in athletic. Vlad's lifetime wish is to become the Emperor of Evil just like Elvira, although Vlad has the upper hand here as Elvira is in the medical career. Vlad's only relationships are his good friendship with Elvira Slayer and acquaintances with his boss. His bio makes me think that he'll probably choose the old clan because he doesn't know anyone else from the new one. However, I think that there is a much more interesting story to Vlad and who he might have known in the past, but more on that in a later video. In his inventory, Vladimir carries the usual objects, but he also has a laptop, the Prudence Penny Pincher portable piano, three plasma fruits, and a book titled Breaking Wind. Okay, so let's move on to one of Elvira's best friends forever, William Fangman. He lives in the household called Drama on TV, whose bio reads, One house can hold so many stories. When City Entertainment started the 17th season of Little Celebrity and put this cast together, they knew they were going to have a great show. Caitlin Massoni and Apollo Bloom provide plenty of vacuous entertainment while Kirby Wise lusts after the prominent politician in town. William Fangman is too smart for his own good, but does he know who his secret admirer is? William's personal bio reads, William uses his gift for reading minds to manipulate his simple-minded roommates. Life is on easy street when everything always goes your way. So we'll just be taking a closer look at William here as this household has a lot of drama and I'll be covering that in a separate video. William lives with his roommates at 57 Dockside Road in an apartment building called Troller Lodge. The household owns the whole floor so there is plenty of space for everyone. William's room is the darkest of them all, where he has a computer, a chess table, a bookcase, and a base, and he also has a separate room that leads to his coffin. William is a young adult vampire working as a traffic cop in the law enforcement career. He is an Aquarius and is brave, a loner, unlucky, inappropriate, and athletic. His favorites are classical music, O Positive Blood, and the color black, and he has one skill point in logic, base, and handiness. William's lifetime wish is to become a forensic specialist dynamic DNA profiler. William is best friends forever with Elvira Slayer, good friends with Morrigan Hemlock, disliked with Bilisama Hemlock, and enemies with Wogan Hemlock. In his inventory, William carries the usual objects, but also has the Shibata string base, three plasma fruits, and a book titled The Noble History of Socks. All of this information is pretty strange, honestly. I think it's pretty strange that William is a vampire, but he doesn't have the evil trait, and also that he's in the law enforcement career and supposed to be part of Elvira's clan. None of this sounds right. Okay, maybe I guess being enemies with Wogan, who is in the criminal career, makes sense, but William is best friends with Morrigan, Wogan's wife. My theory here is that this could possibly be because maybe Morrigan hasn't told her husband that she's in the criminal career considering the first time you play the Hemlocks, her husband doesn't even know. So let's have a closer look at them next. The family bio reads, the Hemlock family doesn't quite conform to one label, but the neighbors frequently refer to them as that hippie vampire family. Morrigan, Wogan, and their child Belisama enjoy hydroponic and soil-grown plasma fruit, as well as sharing music together as a family. The Hemlocks live at 1787 Bayshore Highway in an apartment building called the Tidewater. Their apartment is right across from the elevator, and like the others, features an open-plan kitchen, dining, and living area. The apartment has a gorgeous view overlooking the bridge and has two bedrooms, one for Belisama, one for Wogan and Morrigan, and a separate room with all of their coffins. Their apartment also has two bathrooms. 
A quick and interesting fact is that their surname Hemlock might refer to a poisonous flowering plant belonging in the carrot family. So let's first start off with Wogan. His bio reads, Wogan has been around the city long enough to know that the winds of change have started blowing throughout the local community of vampires. It will be up to him to decide which path his family will follow. Okay, so interestingly, Wogan Hemlock is part of the older vampire clan. However, he turned and married a much younger vampire, Morrigan, and they had a baby, Belisama. From his bio, we know Wogan, similarly to Vlad, will have to make some sort of decision when it comes to choosing a clan. Wogan is a young adult vampire working as a thug in the criminal career where he's doing okay. He hates the outdoors, is a loner, a daredevil, a genius, and a schmoozer. He's a Sagittarius, his favorites are pop music, O positive blood, and the color black, and he has two skill points in athletic and foreign base. Wogan's lifetime wish is to become a master thief. He is best friends forever with Jessica Talon, has a pretty good relationship with his wife, is good friends with his daughter Belisama and vampire Beau Merrick. Wogan is enemies with his sister Bridget Hemlock and William Fangman, and old enemies with Elvira Slayer. Interestingly, this doesn't appear on Elvira's relationship panel, which might have been overlooked by the developers. Wogan, just like William Fangman, also doesn't have the evil trait, which is really strange for vampires in The Sims 3. In his inventory, Wogan has the usual objects, but he also has the Shibata string base, three plasma fruits, and a book titled Shadow of the Tower, which might be referencing Elvira Slayer's mighty shadow she casts over the vampire community. Let's have a look at his wife, Morrigan. Her bio reads, Morrigan was not a vampire when she met Wogan, but with his overwhelming charm, she couldn't resist. Now a vampire herself, she's deeply in love with her husband and excited about raising their child in the ways of the Elder Clan. Morrigan is a young adult vampire working as a getaway driver in the criminal career where she's doing all right. She is insane, hot-headed, has commitment issues, is evil and ambitious. She is a Sagittarius and her favorites are classical music, O positive blood and the color turquoise. And she has one skill point in logic, three in athletic and five in drums. Morrigan's lifetime wish is to become a master thief, just like her husband Wogan. Morrigan might be based off of the character Morrigan from Dragon Age. Sims 3 Morrigan's personality traits such as hot-headed, evil, and commitment issues reflect those of the Dragon Age character, as she herself doesn't have empathy or any interest in making friends. Morrigan Hemlock also has an object named after her which has shipped with the Sims 3 outdoor living stuff. The object called Morrigan Stargazer features a story that reads, at the turn of the first millennium, Morrigan Hemlock fought for the inclusion of astrology into the scientific realm, but could never convince the authorities of its scientific legitimacy. After nearly a 45-year battle, Morrigan turned to astronomy as a scientific endeavor. This telescope, first coined as a stargazer, is what Morrigan used to wow the crowd of scientific experts and thus forever lost her love of astrology. She is also mentioned in the Sims 4 movie Hangout Stuff in a mirror's description which reads, Steven and Checo rarely visit cities, but they're too intrigued by the prospect of picking a vampire's property to resist. In Bridgeport, they meet Morrigan Hemlock, a pale lady with an eclectic taste for the odd world. She's initially hesitant to sell, but agrees to part with a Romany mirror in her collection once Checo points out that it isn't something she'll need for Oh, say, the rest of eternity. The morning after, Stephen panics upon discovering bite marks on his neck. The source is soon traced back to a rampant bedbug infestation in their hotel, though, and the two quickly leave Bridgeport in their rearview mirror. Morrigan is best friends forever with Elvira Slayer and good friends with her daughter Belisama and William Fangma. She is enemies with Beau Merrick and Jessica Talon. Let's have a look at their daughter, Belisama. Belisama's name originated from a Gaulish Celtic goddess, whose name means the brightest one or the most powerful. Her bio reads, One of the youngest vampires in town, Belisama is sure to face problems fitting in at school. Will she embrace being a vampire or reject the ways of the Elder Clan? Belisama is a vampire toddler who is evil and a light sleeper. 
She is a Libra and her favorites are electronica music, tri-tip steak, and the color black. Once she ages up though, the food preference will change to blood. She is good friends with her parents, is disliked by William Fangman, and enemies with Jessica Tallon and Elvira Slayer. I want to look at Wogan's sister as well. She's a townie and she's interesting to me because of her relationship with her brother. I really wonder what happened there. As she's a townie, Bridget doesn't have a biography and she's actually pretty hard to come across in Bridgeport. She can usually be found in a club working as a mixologist or bouncer, but in my game, she's Wogan's co-worker in the criminal career. Bridget has a good sense of humor, is a loner, unlucky, charismatic, and friendly. She's a Leo and her favorites are pop music, O Positive Blood, and The Color Black. She has the mixology skill maxed out and her lifetime wish is to become a master mixologist. Bridget carries the usual in her inventory, but also has a book titled The Price of Treasure. Interestingly, just like William and her brother Wogan, Bridget also doesn't have the evil trait. She also doesn't know anyone else apart from her brother, which is really curious. I wonder what happened between them. I have a theory that because she wanted to be a master mixologist and not something in the criminal career, she had a falling out with her brother and became an outcast vampire, but I don't know. There's also an eerily similar picture of her on this billboard near the marina field that looks just like her. Hey, maybe she models part-time. I'd love to hear your guys' take on this. Also, I was playing with them earlier and Bridget came over to visit the Hemlocks apartment and, well, she really made herself feel at home. Okay, now onto the newer clan of vampires. Let's start off with their leader, Jessica Tallon. The household bio reads, Jessica Tallon, a name that puts fear in many a young vampire, has forced some sims to stake their allegiance against her. Her better half, Raphael Stryker, is much less intimidating but just as influential a name in late night business circles. Underneath her tough exterior, Jessica's chief desire is just that Raphael will keep up with her on the dance floor. He has other ideas though, like owning his own bar. Jessica's bio reads, Jessica moved to the big city to escape her dubious past. As a natural leader, vampires have started being drawn to her presence, upsetting the natural balance of vampires in the city. Now she finds herself in a similar situation to the one she left behind. What will happen if her boyfriend Raphael gets drawn into the conflict? Jessica and Raphael live at 2707 Mall Street in an apartment building called Hieroglyph Condos. Their apartment has two floors and an open plan situation like the others. There's an open living, dining, and kitchen area, and a bathroom. Near the entrance, there's a room for Jessica's coffin. Upstairs is the bedroom that has a piano, a computer, and a bookcase. Next to the bedroom, there appears to be a room with a drum kit inside, probably a makeshift recording studio that can be looked in on from the windows next to the stairs. So let's have a closer look at Jessica. She's a young adult vampire working as a grunt in the military career where she's doing pretty well. She is flirty, a daredevil, charismatic, evil and ambitious and has the hidden pyromaniac and immune to fire traits, which means her mother or father were firefighters. She is an Aries and her favorites are Latin music, O Positive Blood and the color black and she has three skill points in piano and two in athletic. Jessica's lifetime wish is to become an astronaut. She is best friends forever with Wogan, is romantically involved with Raphael Stryker, with whom she lives with, is best friends with Beau Merrick, and enemies with Elvira Slayer, Bella Sama, and Morrigan Hemlock. Her surname Talon might be a reference to League of Legends assassin Talon. In her inventory, Jessica carries the usual, as well as a Prudence Penny Pincher's portable piano, three plasma fruits, and a book titled Woohoo in the Wastelands. Let's look at her love interest, Raphael. His bio reads, Raphael has reinvented himself since moving to the big city. The aspiring owner of a hip new club in downtown, he can often be found socializing with A-list celebrities. Will his social connections finally lead him to the details of Jessica's secret nightlife? Raphael is a young adult human sim, working in the business career as a report processor where he's doing all right. He is a great kisser, a technophobe, a party animal, charismatic, and ambitious. 
He is a Scorpio, and his favorites are electronica music, cobbler, and the color purple, and he has no skills. Raphael's lifetime wish is to become a master mixologist. Looking at Raphael's family tree, we can see he's related to his brother Richie, but when we move to the relationships panel, he doesn't know him or his family. In his inventory, Raphael carries the usual as well as a guitar, the audio light by Lo-Fi Stereo, and a book titled Point Farmer, The Story of Grant Rodiak, which funnily enough, is named after the senior producer of The Sims, Grant Rodiak. What I find interesting about both Raphael and Jessica is that neither play the drums, so it's pretty weird they have a whole room dedicated to this drum kit. I guess it's never late to learn? Alright, now onto the next vampire, part of the new clan, Bo Merrick. Bo lives with three other roommates and, well, this drama will have to be covered in another video, but for now let's focus on Bo. The household bio reads, if the ladies in this house had fangs, they would have been at each other's throats a long time ago. While Bianca, Lily Bo, and Marina make each other's blood boil, Vampire Bo bides his time and enjoys the feud. Which one of the three will he finally find irresistible? Bo's personal bio reads, Despite his semi-introverted personality, Bo is the center of attention in his household. This is of course all part of Bo's master plan, how will his roommates react when they find out that he's a vampire? Wow, I mean, I, I think they'll be so shocked. He blends in so well with the rest of society. <laughs> Bo lives at Two Peak Parkway in an apartment building called Off Ramp. His room is pretty minimalistic and he has another room for his coffin. Bo is a vampire young adult working as a burial specialist in the mausoleum where he's doing okay. He hates the outdoors, is a loner, a genius, frugal and evil, and he has the pyromaniac hidden trait just like Jessica. Huh, what are the odds of that? Bo is a Capricorn and his favorites are electronica music, O positive blood and the color black. He has two skill points in logic and his lifetime wish is to become a master romancer. Bo is romantically involved with all of his roommates, Bianca Rubble, Marina Prattle and Lily Bo Chic. He is good friends with Jessica Talon, Wogan Hemlock, but enemies with Elvira Slayer and Morrigan Hemlock. Bo could be based off of Deacon Frost from Blade series. The plot for this household could reference the Brides of Dracula, however none of his roommates are vampires and they also don't know he is one. Alright, so it's time to look into this vampire feud. Here's what we know so far. The new clan of vampires include Jessica, Bo and Belisama. Jessica has a dubious past and moved to Bridgeport to get away from it. It's said that with her natural leader presence, she put fear into young vampires, but it seems like it's drawing them to her. Bo is a young adult, is friends with Jessica and enemies with the older clan, so he's definitely part of the new clan. Belisama is here because, well, she's the youngest vampire in Bridgeport and is enemies with Elvira, so it's a no-brainer. I'm kind of unsure about where Wogan would stand. I think that he hasn't made the move to the newer clan because of his wife's desire to be in the older one. His bio mentions that he needs to decide which way to go, old or new, but something tells me that even though his wife is almost in the old clan, he wants out. The older clan of vampires include Elvira, Vlad, William, and possibly Morrigan. Elvira is the most feared and most powerful leader in the city, as mentioned in her household bio, and is the leader of the older clan. Vlad is here because of his long-lasting relationship with Elvira, but Vlad is also part of another mystery, so I have a feeling a lot will be revealed about him in my next video, as there is more to his story. William is here because of his relationships with the older clan members. He is also enemies with Wogan, and honestly, that might be because his secret admirer mentioned in his household bio might be Morrigan. They have a high relationship, Morrigan has commitment issues, and they will end up flirting or doing more at some stage. I included Morrigan here as well because honestly, I think she's a part of the old clan despite how young she is since she has such a good report with all the older clan members. What's interesting to me about Morrigan is that she has the evil trait and a want to be in the old clan, however, Wogan is not evil and seems to be more friendly with members of the newer clan. 
It seems like Morrigan is almost already part of the old clan and Wogan might already be part of the new one and things could definitely get tense considering their relationships but also the fact that they both want to become a master thief. I personally think Elvira could also be feuding with Vlad at some point despite their relationship since they both want to become the Emperor of Evil. There is also something unsettling about where they all hang out. Plasma 501 is the place to be if you're a powerful, respected vampire. However, this vampire hotspot could hold more secrets than you think. Alright guys, there you have it. Lots of info on the drama between the two Bridgeport vampire clans. I'd like to thank my patrons Olivia McSwain, Negative Dana, Papa Khan, Leo Thompson, Artsy Flashback, Nathan Lim, Caitlin Luigi, Mr. Netch, Kita John the Arcane Archer, and Whitney. Thank you guys so much for supporting my channel. That's it for today's video. Thank you all so much for watching. Please like the video if you enjoyed it and let me know your theories in the comments below. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram for more lore and updates. I'll see you in my next video. Bye!